Welcome to AI for Good, the leading action-oriented, global and inclusive United Nations platform on AI. Organized by ITU, in partnership with 40 UN sister organizations, and co-convened with Switzerland. The goal of AI for Good is to identify practical applications of AI to advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and scale those solutions for global impact. In today's session, we're counting on you to use the live video wall feature to ask questions and post comments to help create an engaging discussion. We encourage you to stay until the end to chat, connect, ask questions, and network with our distinguished panelists and world-class AI experts in the neural network. It is now time to kick off the session and welcome our first speaker. The floor is yours. A very good day to everyone and thank you for joining today's session. Welcome to our AF for Good Machine Learning in 5D Challenge webinar session. My name is Mia Nishio from ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. The Machine Learning in 5D Challenge aims to create a community to solve network-related issues using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Today, we are excited to host an interesting talk on GANs, also known as Generative Adversarial Networks. This comes as a second part to our previous webinar that was held on July 1st. If you have not yet watched it, I would recommend that you find it on our AI for Good YouTube page. As always, we are counting on you, the participants, to help create an engaging discussion. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat and we will take them during the Q&A session right after the talk. Without further ado, I would like to introduce today's opening speaker, Shridhar who is currently working as a senior architect technical community with the Linux Foundation. Our main speaker will be Rohit. He's a researcher in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning with a focus on deep learning, probabilistic models, optimization, and scientific machine learning. The title of today's talk is Synthetic Observability Data Generation Using GANs Models, which should provide a detailed overview of GANs. It will also cover some hands-on exercises using TensorFlow. Over to you, Shridhar. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, Nilsen. Okay. Uh, Rohit, can you share a screen? Yeah. Uh, so as, as Mia mentioned, so this is our second uh, uh, session. Uh, so we this uh, this is jointly hosted by Linux Foundation, LFN Anuket, the Toth Project, and the China Mobile. So we have our China Mobile representative, Lei Huang, in the call. So thanks, Lei, for joining. Uh, so, uh, I will begin with the quick uh, survey of uh, how, how GANs has been used for time series data. And uh, once this, uh, this this survey should give you an idea about uh, how uh, how how you if if you're already working on this particular problem of uh, generating synthetic observability data, which is a time series data set using GANs, you just have to give a overview of how it has been used over the last oh, few years, five six years for this particular set of problem. So that based on this uh, work, you can decide or uh, reuse some of the works and see which of these guns could be a best uh, fit for your problem. Okay, next. Yeah, so this uh, using of uh, guns uh, in time series data is not a new uh, thing, luckily. Uh, and there have been different types of problems or use cases that have, uh, guns have been used for time series. One is of course for the generation, which is the problem that, uh, uh, the main focus of this particular talk. And uh, based on this uh, GANs using the prediction, the repairing, the, the anomaly detection, the classification and estimation. So these are the broad uh, six uh, categories or use cases I would want to bucketize how GANs have been uh, uh, used with time series data, right? Now, uh, these problems are applied to different set of problem domains. And we, we see a lot of work in the domain of finance, uh, the banking and finance sector, the network, of course, that 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 which is our uh, focus as of today, especially the cloud part of the thing. Uh, as you know, uh, the whole telecom network has seen a significant change over the last six seven years. A lot of cloudification of network has happened, right? So we are focusing on that particular aspect of the network, and the medical field of medical or uh, healthcare. Uh, you will see a lot of these problems have been applied. And finally, the energy of the smart grid in particular. So you will see quite a few publications that are there uh, using GANs for this uh, time series data. Now, with this uh, set of uh, background, we will see uh, the important pro problem, the point that you will come across is 
once you use a particular GANs and generate a, a data set, now how do you decide uh, how good it is, right? Of course, within GANs, you have discriminator and you will see uh, how well you are performing thing. Now, there are a bunch of metrics that are there uh, that has been used in the related works. So the next one. So these, uh, these set of metrics I'm just uh, showing, uh, they are mostly a lot of these metrics are, of course, uh, statistical, uh, statistical uh, in nature. Uh, and and uh, they, have, they have been used uh, in, in quite a few works. Of course, we begin with the simple things like mean and variations and the distribution. And we, we come with the mutual information, which gives how one random variable is uh, dependent on the other random variable. Thing. And do we see such kind of things uh, between the two data sets that uh, the real one and the synthetic one. And the next we have this, uh, the percentage RMS uh, thing. It's of course, uh, uh, it's a difference between the original and the reconstructed ones. And, and one of the important metrics, the DW, DTW, the dynamic time wrapping has been used in quite a few uh, works. Uh, it, it, it basically, it's, uh, uh, it's measuring the similarity between two uh, time, time series, kind of, temporal series kind of thing. And in good thing with uh, DTW is even these time series are uh, varying in speed. If it's the amount of uh, the frequency of these timestamps are uh, varying, still it, it can uh, work well. And uh, the, the classical, uh, the statistical distances are again, the WD and EMDs are uh, used in quite a uh, works. And lastly, uh, the set of dimensional reduction techniques like TSNEs and PC analysis are also the common metrics that have been used. So uh, this, this uh, why I'm sh sharing this set of metrics because this is what will uh, eventually try to use it to improve the quality of the synthetic data that we have generated. Now, uh, I don't want to go too much uh, because our whole next topic, our next presentation in this series will be on this particular uh, metrics uh, topic. We want to, we will go and elaborate how, how we are going to be assessing your data set that you will be generating, right? Because that is, that's very critical. Um, yeah, go to the next one. Now, uh, I just want to share, provide this information on what comes to use, right? Uh, so what have been used over uh, existing works? So if you see uh, from 2016, uh, people are using GANs for the time series data, especially the generation uh, starting from CRNN uh, to the most recent is the TTS GAN uh, is published very as recently as 2022. And uh, I think in, in today's session, uh, the time GAN is what Rohit uh, will be focusing on in his hands-on session. Uh, so now which GAN to use as a, for this particular problem? Uh, we don't want to bias it to, to begin with. Of course, right. So you you can uh, you can go through these kind of works that we will share these slides also the references. You can go through these works and see the what is this a best fit for this particular problem, and then you can experiment these kind of work. You will have implementation of these kinds of course uh, which will be available. So you can try it out. Okay. So this this uh, quick survey to for you to help you to kickstart and work on your problem. Uh, we wanted to do that before uh, I hand over this to uh, Rohit to go in detail about GANs and uh, give a hands-on session on how to use the time GANs. Thank you very much. Over to you, Roy. Uh, thank you, Sridhar. Okay, uh, thank you, Sridhar. Uh, so as Sridhar mentioned like uh, about GANs and time series data, data instead of the art survey, so now uh, my talk will be focused on like uh, what is the difference uh, between like a uh, generative and distributive models and how we can identify the problems uh, that we can uh, solve using the GANs. And uh, also we will understand the roles of the gener generator and the discriminator in a GAN system. And uh, we will uh, see like what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, of common uh, GAN, go of common uh, GAN loss functions. And we will also try to identify possible solutions to common problems uh, like uh, with GAN, GAN training. And uh, in the end, we will use the TensorFlow GAN library uh, to make a GAN. Okay, uh, so now, um, Let's uh, move forward. So uh, before moving forward, uh, I would like to. Hello. Uh, 
hello can you hear me yes we can hear you uh i am really sorry <laughs> my pointer has freezed actually just Ah, uh, sorry, uh, Sridhar sir. Please, uh, can you take over for just two minutes? Shridhar, would it be possible to ask you to share the slide? Ah, uh, sure, sure, sure. Let me. Okay. One second. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you can. Uh... Oh, I cannot share the screen. I don't have the permission. Oh. <laughs> so I guess uh, while we're heat. Is sharing your screen, it might be. Oh, I think it's possible now. Could you maybe try again? We can see your screen. Thank you. But I think Rohit is frozen as well. Would it be possible for you to take over just for oh, three or four minutes? We lost Rohit, is it? I think we did. Yes, we just did. So, oh, I think oh, he's joined again. So, if you could just maybe take over for three or four minutes. Um. Okay. Okay. So, just give me a second. Uh. Uh, sorry, I cannot share my screen. Don't worry, Rohit. You can use my screen. I'm sharing, so go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I am really, uh, really, really, really sorry uh, for this uh, problem. Actually, uh, my system uh, had talking uh, like uh, about that, like uh, as either uh, had already shared about the set of the heart uh, GAN survey. So uh, now, um, like uh, as we know, uh, machine learning algorithms are great at recognizing uh, patterns. In existing data, and uh, then uh, using uh, that insight for tasks such as classification and uh, regression. Um, so, uh, when asked uh, to generate new data, so however, computers uh, have struggled. So here, uh, an algorithm can uh, like uh, defeat a chess grandmaster, and also can estimate stock price uh, movements and can classify whether a credit uh, card uh, transaction is uh, likely to be uh, fraudulent or not. So in contrast, like uh, any attempt at making a uh, small talk or uh, with Amazon's Alexa or Apple Siri is doomed. So indeed, like uh, here, uh, humanity uh, is most basic and uh, essential capacities. So including uh, convivial conversation or the crafting uh, of an original creation. So it can leave even the most sophisticated supercomputers uh, in digital sphere. So here, uh, so it all like this all changed in 2014 uh, when Ian Goodfellow, uh, who was a PhD student at the uh, University of Montreal, uh, who invented uh, guns. So this technique uh, had enabled uh, computers to generate uh, realistic data by using not one, but two separate uh, neural networks. So here, uh, GANs uh, were not the first uh, computer program um, which has been used to generate data, but uh, their results and uh, versatility uh, set them apart from all the rest. So that's why uh, GANs uh, have achieved remarkable uh, results. 
uh, that uh, had uh, long been considered virtually impossible for um, artificial uh, systems. So such as the ability like uh, to generate uh, fake images with a uh, real world like uh, quality. So it turns uh, it turns a scribble into a photograph like image or um, also it turns a video footage of a house into a running zebra. Like it, it all uh, possible without the need for a uh, vast troubles of uh, painstakingly uh, label training data. So here, uh, as you can see uh, the image, so it is the telling, uh, it is a telling example of how uh, far machine uh, data generation data generation uh, has been able to advance. So uh, it, like uh, thanks to GANS, uh, like uh, is this like it is the uh, synthesis of uh, human faces, uh, which uh, I have illust illustrated uh, in the given figure up uh, in the previous slide, please. No, in the previous slide. Uh, yeah, so here, uh, if you will see uh, the image of the 2014, uh, so uh, when GANs uh, were invented, so the best uh, that machines uh, could produce uh, was a blurred uh, count, was a blurred countenance. So, and even that was celebrated as a groundbreaking su success. Why 2017, if you will see the image of the 2017, so just, uh, three years uh, later. So that was the advances uh, in GANs, which enabled uh, computers to synthesize uh, fake faces whose quality uh, rivals high resolution uh, portrait uh, photographs. So um, now, now in this talk, like uh, we will uh, look under the hood of the algorithm that made all this possible. Uh, please uh, move on to next slide. Yeah, so uh, here, uh, if you will see, no, the previous one. So yeah, here, uh, if you will see uh, this image, is uh, this, uh, like this can was generated uh, by NVIDIA. So here can achieve this level of realism by pairing a generator, uh, which learns to produce the target output with a discriminator. And uh, then uh, it learns to distinguish to data from the output of the generator. So here uh, the generator tries to fool the discriminator and the discriminator tries to keep from being fooled. So I'll move on to the next slide, please. Ah, uh, yeah. So now I will talk about like uh, what are generative adversarial networks. So first, uh, in if you will see uh, now, uh, like first I will talk about what is generative. So uh, here the word generative indicates that the overall purpose of the model creating new data. So the data that again will learn to generate depends on the choice of the training set. For example, uh, if uh, we want again to synthesize uh, images that look like uh, Leonardo da Vinci's. So here uh, we would use a training data set of da Vinci's artwork. Now the, the term adversarial points to the game like a uh, competitive dynamic between the two models that constitute uh, the gain, the, the GAN framework. Okay, so the generator and the discriminator. So the generator's uh, goal is to create examples that are uh, indistinguishable uh, from the real data in the training set. So in our example, uh, this means uh, producing uh, paintings that looks just like the Vinci's. Okay. So and the and the discriminator's objective is to distinguish the fake examples produced by the generator from the real examples coming from the training data set. So in our example, uh, the discriminator uh, plays the role of an art expert assessing the authenticity of paintings believed to be the Vinci's. So the two networks are, continuous, uh, are continually trying to outbid each other. The better the generator uh, gets at creating convincing data, the better the discriminator uh, needs to be at uh, distinguishing real examples from the fake ones. So now finally, I will talk about the networks award. So here the network indicates uh, the class of machine learning models are most commonly used to represent the generator and the discriminator. So depending on the complexity of uh, GANs implementation, so these uh, can uh, range from simple field forward neural networks to, uh, convolutional, to convolutional neural networks or even more complex variants such as uh, UNET, okay? Uh, so uh, now, uh, uh, like uh, we can have uh, two types of definitions here. 
uh, if if I talk about no no previous slide please. Yeah, if I talk about in informally way, so uh, like I can say, uh, generative models can generate a uh, new data instances and uh, the discriminative models uh, discriminate between different uh, kinds of data instances. So here a generative model could generate a new photos of animal like that could that can be look like uh, real animals and while a discriminative model could tell a dog from a cat. So uh, like uh, here GANs are just uh, one kind of a generative model. Now, if I talk about like in more formally way, how I can uh, define uh, GANs, okay? So let's say uh, uh, like uh, we have a set of data instances uh, X and a set of labels uh, Y. So here a uh, generative model uh, would capture the joint probability or just uh, probability of X if there are no labels and the discriminative models capture the conditional probability. So here, uh, a generative models uh, includes the distribution of the data itself and uh, tells us how likely a given example is. Okay, so for example, uh, models that predict uh, the next uh, word in a sequence are typically generative models, usually like uh, much simpler uh, than GANs because uh, they can assign a probability to a sequence of words. Uh, in the other way, uh, like in, in the other hand, a discriminative model ignores the question of whether a given instance is likely and uh, just tells us how We lost him again. Yes, I don't think I can hear Rohit either. Second. Yes, I think. Oh, I think he's back. Uh, can we uh, move on to modeling probability slide? A uh, slide number 10, yeah. Yeah, so uh, here uh, I will talk about uh, modeling probability. So neither kind of models uh, has to return a number uh, representing a probability. So we can model the distribution of data by imitating that distribution. For example, uh, a discriminator classifier like a decision tree can label an instance without assigning a probability to that label. So such a classifier would still be a model uh, because a distribution of all predicted labels uh, would model the real distribution of labels in the data. Similarly, uh, a generative model can model a distribution uh, by producing convincing uh, fake data that looks like uh, it's drawn from that distribution. Okay, so uh, like uh, we can have uh, in our mind like uh, our generative models hard. So uh, here, uh, generative models uh, tackle a uh, more difficult task than analogous uh, discriminative models. So generative models have to model more and a generative model uh, for images might capture correlations like uh, things that look like uh, boats are probably uh, going to appear near things that look like water or like uh, eyes are unlikely to appear on foreheads. So uh, these are very complicated distributions. So in context, like uh, we can say like, and in other hand, like uh, a discriminative uh, model might uh, learn the difference between a sailboat or not sailboat by just looking uh, for a few telltale patterns. So it could ignore many of the correlations uh, that uh, the generative model uh, must get right. So uh, uh, discriminative models are here tries uh, to draw boundaries in the data space uh, while uh, generative models uh, try to model how data is placed throughout the space. Okay. Uh, next slide, please.
Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, now uh, we will see like uh, how actually uh, uh, GANs uh, work. Okay. So uh, the uh, mathematics underpinning of GANs are very complex actually. So uh, fortunately, like uh, many real world analogies uh, can make again easier to understand. So uh, previously, like uh, I had uh, taken an example of an art forger, uh, which uh, was trying to fool an art expert, uh, which is known as the discriminator. So uh, now uh, the more convincing the fake paintings uh, the forger makes, the better the art expert uh, must be at determining their authenticity. So uh, actually, like uh, it is uh, true in the reverse situation as well. So the better uh, the art expert is at telling, like uh, whether a particular painting is genuine. So the uh, the more the forger uh, must improve to avoid being caught red-handed. So um, here, um, be like uh, if I talk about in more technical terms. So the generator's uh, goal is to produce examples that capture the characteristics of the training data set. So uh, so much like uh, so that the samples it generates look uh, interesting as well from the training data. So uh, it like it can be thought of as an object recognition model in reverse. So where object uh, recognition uh, algorithms learn the patterns in images to discern an image's uh, content instead of recognizing the patterns, the uh, generator learns to create them uh, essentially from scratch. So now uh, the input into the generator um, is often uh, no more than a vector of random numbers. Okay. So. Um, the second thing is uh, the generator uh, learns uh, through the feedback it receives uh, from the discriminators classifications. So the discriminators uh, goal uh, is to determine uh, whether a particular example is real, like uh, coming from the training data set or fake, like uh, created, created by the generator. So accordingly, each time the discriminator is uh, fold into classifying a fake images as real, uh, so uh, the generator uh, knows uh, it did something well. Okay, uh, conversely, like uh, each time the discriminator uh, correctly rejects uh, generator produced images as fake, uh, then the generator receives uh, the feedback that uh, it needs to improve. Uh, so uh, then the discriminator continues to improve as well, like uh, any classifier, it uh, learns from how far uh, its uh, predictions are from uh, the two levels, uh, which is uh, real or fake. So as uh, the generator gets better at producing a realistic uh, looking data, then uh, the discriminator uh, gets better at telling fake data from the real and both networks uh, continue to improve simultaneously. Uh, move on to next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, now uh, as uh, we like, uh, we are having a high level understanding of guns and uh, their constitute, constituent networks. So now let's take a closer look at the system in action. So imagine that our goal is to teach a gun to produce a realistic lo uh, looking handwritten digits. So here, uh, if you will see the number one, uh, here we can consider it like uh, we are taking the data, uh, which is uh, realistic looking handwritten digits. So um, in this case, uh, if I talk about, uh, like now I will walk through the details of this particular diagram. So first, let's talk about uh, the point number one, uh, which is uh, I am considering as uh, the training data set. So here, the data set of real examples that uh, we want the generator to learn to emulate uh, with near perfect quality. So in this case, the data set uh, consists of images of uh, handwritten digits. So this data set uh, serves as input of X, input of X uh, to the discriminator network. Okay, and if I talk about the second uh, thing is which is uh, random noise. Um, so here the raw input Z uh, to the generator network. Okay, so this input uh, is a vector of random numbers uh, that uh, the generator uses uh, as a starting point for synthesizing fake examples. Now, if I talk about the generator network, so the, uh, the generator uh, takes uh, in a vector of random numbers Z 
as input and outputs are fake examples uh, which we can uh, which we can annotate as x star so it's uh, uh, here its goal uh, is to make the fake examples uh, it produces indistinguishable uh, from the real examples in the training data set now if i talk about our discriminator network so the discriminator uh, takes as input either a real example x coming from the training set or a fake example x star uh, which had been produced uh, by the generator so for each for each example uh, the discriminator uh, determines and outputs the probability of whether the example is real or not so now if i talk about uh, this iteratively uh, training or tuning so here uh, for each of the discriminators uh, predictions we determine how good it is uh, much as we would uh, for a regular classifier and uh, use uh, the results to iteratively uh, tune the discriminator and the generator networks through back propagation okay so uh, the generators uh, weights and biases are updated Uh, no uh, please uh, move on to previous slide yeah so uh, here uh, the discriminators are bits and biases are updated to the uh, to maximize its classification accuracy it means like uh, uh, when we will uh, maximize the probability of correct prediction uh, as uh, x is real and x star is fake and uh, in the other hand the generators uh, weights and biases are updated to maximize the probability that the discriminator uh, misclassifies as uh, x star as real uh, move on to next slide so uh, now um, we have learnt about the purpose of the like uh, the various uh, gain components so it may feel like uh, looking at a snapshot uh, of an engine like uh, it cannot be understood fully until uh, like uh, we will see it in motion so uh, that's why uh, in this particular um, slide uh, i have uh, like put the gain training algorithm and after this particular slide i will illustrate uh, this particular training process so uh, like uh, we can see the architecture diagram in excel uh, move on to next slide okay uh, so uh, through this particular diagram uh, i have visualized uh, that particular uh, gain algorithm so uh, uh, first like uh, i will talk about uh, uh, this um, sub diagram uh, which is uh, known as uh, like uh, here i am training um, the discriminator so what i am doing here so here uh, i am uh, taking a random real example x okay and uh, from the training data set and then um, in the second step uh, i like uh, we will get a new random noise vector z and uh, using then using the generate uh, and then using the generator network uh, we are trying to synthesize a fake example x star in the next next step like uh, i like uh, we will use the discriminator network to classify x and x star then uh, we will compute the classification errors and uh, back propagate uh, the total error to update the discriminator weights and biases uh, which will uh, seek to minimize the classification errors uh, move on to next slide please on no, the no, previous one uh, about the training the generator oh yeah so uh yeah so here uh, the discriminator in a gain like uh, as i told uh, which is simply a classifier uh, which tries uh, to distinguish uh, real data from the data created by the generator so um, it could use like uh, any network architecture appropriate to the type of the data it's uh, classifying so uh, that uh, that discriminators are training data comes from two sources the first one is a uh, real data instances and the second one is fake data instances so in real data instances like uh, which is uh, such as uh, real pictures of people so here uh, the discriminator uh, uses uh, these instances as positive examples during training Uh, whereas uh, fake data instances created by this generator so here the discriminator uh, uses uh, these instances as negative example during uh, training 
Okay, so now if I talk, if I talk about like uh, training a discriminator, so here the discriminator connects uh, to two loss functions are during. Um, uh, so during discriminator training, the discri the discriminator ignores the generator loss and uh, just uses the discriminator loss. Okay, so we use uh, the generator loss uh, during generator training. Okay, uh, so here uh, during uh, discriminator training, uh, so the discriminator classifies both real data and fake data from the generator and then uh, like a discriminator uh, loss analyzes the discriminator for, uh, for misclassifying a real instance as fake or a fake instance as real. Then discriminator uh, updates uh, its bits uh, through back propagation from the discriminator loss through the discriminator network. Okay, uh, move on to the next slide please. Yeah, so now uh, we will uh, have a look on uh, training the uh, generator. So uh, here, um, like uh, it uh, gets a new random noise vector Z and uh, and then uh, using the generator network, it synthesize a fake example X star. And then in the next step, uh, it use the discriminator network to classify X star. Uh, then uh, it compute the classification error and uh, back propagate the error to update the generator bits and biases, uh, which seeks to uh, maximize the discriminator's error. Move on to the next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, now uh, the generator uh, part of a GAN um, learns to create fake data by incorporating feedback from the discriminator. So here uh, it learns uh, to make the discriminator uh, classify its output as real. So uh, here the generator training uh, requires tighter integration uh, between the generator and the discriminator. So then a uh, discriminator training uh, requires. So the portion of the GAN uh, that trains the generator, uh, it includes random input and uh, generating uh, network, uh, which transform the random input into a data instance. And then a uh, discriminator network, so uh, which classifies uh, the generated data. And uh, then a uh, discriminator output. And the next one is generator loss, uh, which penalizes the generator for uh, failing to fool the discriminator, okay? So now if I talk about uh, random input, so here uh, neural, network, uh, neural networks uh, need some form of input, uh, like uh, which normally like uh, be input data that uh, we want to do something with, like uh, an instance uh, that we want to classify or make a prediction about. Uh, what, what do we use as input for a network? Uh, that outputs entirely uh, new data instances. So in it's like a most basic form, here again takes um, random noise as its input, then the generator then transform so this noise into a meaningful output. So then by introducing noise, uh, we can get uh, the GAN to produce a wide um, variety of data, uh, like sampling from different places in the target distribution. So experiments uh, suggest like uh, that uh, the distribution of the noise does not matter much. So we can uh, choose uh, something like uh, that is easy to sample from and like a uniform distribution. Okay, so for convenience, like um, the space uh, from uh, which the noise is sampled is usually of smaller dimension than the dimensionality of the output space. Okay, uh, so now I will talk about the like uh, using a discriminator, uh, like uh, how we can use a discriminator to train the generator. So here, to train a neural network, uh, we alter the nets um, bits to uh, reduce the error or loss of its output. Um, so, like uh, in our again, the generator like uh, is not like a uh, directly connected uh, to the loss like uh, that we are trying to affect, but uh, the generator feeds into the distributor net, and the discriminator uh, produces the output we are trying to affect. So here uh, the, the generator uh, loss uh, penalizes the generator for producing a sample that the discriminator uh, network uh, classifies as fake. So um, this uh, extra chunk of network uh, must be included uh, in back propagation. So then uh, like uh, back, pro back propagation, um, like a uh, bill adjust each bit uh, in the right direction uh, by calculating the bits uh, impact on the output. 
so now like uh, we can have in our mind like uh, how the output uh, would change like uh, if uh, we change the weight so, like uh, but the impact like uh, of a generator um, weight uh, depends on the impact of the discriminator weights um, it fits into so uh, back propagation starts uh, at the output and uh, flows uh, back uh, through the discriminator into generator at the same time like uh, we do not want the discriminator uh, to change uh, during generator training so uh, like uh, which will be trying to hit a moving target uh, would uh, make a hard problem even harder for the generator so that's why like uh, here we train the generator uh, with the following uh, procedure uh, which is uh, first like a sample random noise then uh, we will uh, then we produce generator output uh, from um, sample random noise and then uh, get discriminator real or fake classification for generator output then like calculate loss from discriminator classification then back propagate through uh, both uh, the discriminator and generator to obtain gradients and then use gradients uh, to change only the generator weights uh, move on to next slide please Yeah, so uh, yeah, in uh, GAN uh, training, um, because like uh, um, uh, GAN uh, contains two separately trained networks, uh, like uh, its uh, training algorithm, then uh, its training algorithm must address two complications, uh, which is uh, GANs uh, must juggle uh, two different kinds of training, uh, that is uh, generator and discriminator, and uh, GAN convergence is hard to identify. Now, uh, if I talk about the alternating uh, training, so here um, the generator and the discriminator have different training processes. So uh, how do we train uh, the GANs as a whole? So here uh, GAN uh, training uh, proceeds in alternating periods. Uh, the first is the discriminator uh, trains for one or more, epo more epochs. And the uh, second uh, point is the generator uh, trains for one or more epochs. Then the third thing is repeat uh, steps one and two to continue to train the generator and discriminator networks. So here uh, we keep the generator constant during the discriminator training phase as uh, discriminator training uh, tries to figure out how to distinguish real data from fake, it has to learn and uh, how to recognize the generator's uh, flaws. So that's a different problem um, for a thoroughly trained generator than uh, it is for an untrained generator that produces a random output. Uh, similarly, um, we can keep the discriminator constant during the generator training phase. Otherwise, the generator uh, would be trying to hit a moving target and uh, might never converse. So uh, it, it's this uh, back and forth that allows uh, GANs to tackle um, otherwise uh, intractable uh, generative problems. So here we get a uh, toe hold uh, in a difficult generative uh, problem by starting with a much simpler classification problem. Conversely, like uh, if uh, we cannot train a classifier to tell the difference uh, between uh, real and generated data, even for the initial random generator output, so we cannot then we cannot get uh, the GAN training started. So now if I talk about the convergence, so uh, here as uh, the generator improves uh, with training, the discriminator uh, performance gets uh, worse because the discriminator cannot easily tell the difference uh, between real and fake. Uh, and uh, if the generator succeeds uh, perfectly, then the discriminator has 50% uh, accuracy. And in effect, um, the discriminator flips a coin uh, to make uh, its prediction. So this progression uh, process uh, problem uh, for uh, convergence of the GAN uh, as a whole. And uh, the discriminator feedback gets uh, less meaningful over time. And um, if the GAN uh, continues uh, training um, past uh, the point um, and the discriminator uh, is giving um, completely random feedback, uh, then the generator uh, it starts uh, to train on junk feedback and its own quality may collapse. So uh, here now we can say uh, for again, uh, convergence is often a fleeting uh, rather than a stable state. Uh, move on to next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, now like uh, we may also wonder like uh, when the GAN training loop is uh, mean to stop. So more precisely, uh, how do we know uh, when a GAN is fully trained 
uh, so that uh, we can determine the appropriate number of training iterations. Uh, so uh, with our regular neural network, uh, we usually have a clear objective to achieve and measure. For example, when training a classifier, uh, we measure the classification error on the training and validation sets, and then uh, we stop the process when the validation error uh, starts uh, getting worse. Uh, like, uh, why do we do this? Uh, to avoid overfitting. But in the case of GAN, the two networks uh, have uh, competing objects. Uh, when one network uh, gets better, the other gets worse. So how, uh, like, then how um, we will determine when to stop? So, uh, like, uh, I think uh, those um, will be familiar uh, with game theory may recognize uh, this setup as a geosum game. So here, a situation in which uh, one player uh, gains equal. Uh, the other player's losses, uh, and uh, when one player improves uh, by a certain amount, the other uh, player worsens by the same amount. So all zero-sum uh, games have a Nash equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium. So a point at which neither player can improve their situation or pay off by changing their actions. So here, um, GAN uh, reaches a Nash equilibrium uh, when um, these uh, following conditions are met. Okay. Uh, so uh, now uh, let us convince, uh, now let me convince you like uh, why this is the case. So here uh, when each of the fake examples, uh, which I had annotated as X star, uh, is uh, truly interesting as uh, from the real examples, uh, which I had annotated as X, uh, which was coming from the training data set. So there is nothing the discriminator can use. No, no, previous slide. Yeah. Uh, so, um, there is uh, nothing that discriminator can use to tell them uh, apart from um, one another. So, uh, because half of the examples it receives uh, are uh, real and half are fake. So, the best the discriminator can do is uh, to flip a coin and classify uh, example as real or fake with 50% probability. So here the generator uh, is uh, likewise uh, at a point uh, where it has uh, nothing to gain uh, from further tuning because uh, the examples uh, it produces are already indistinguishable from the real ones. Even a tiny change like uh, to uh, the process, uh, it uh, uses to turn the random noise vector, which I had annotated as Z, uh, into a fake example uh, and known as X star may give that discriminator a, a, a clue for like a, how to discern uh, the fake example from the real data making the generator worse off. Okay. So uh, with the equilibrium now, now with the equilibrium achieved, so GAN uh, is uh, said to have converged like uh, when the GAN will achieve um, the equilibrium, then like a B can say it is converged now. So here is uh, like a when it gets tricky. In practice, like a, it is nearly impossible to find uh, the Nash equilibrium for GANs because of the immense uh, complexities involved in reaching convergence in non-convex games. Okay. Uh, indeed, like a uh, GAN uh, convergence uh, remains uh, one of the most important uh, open questions uh, in GAN research. So fortunately, like uh, this has not uh, impeded uh, GAN research or the many innovative applications of uh, generative adversarial learning, even uh, in the absence of uh, rigorous mathematical guarantees. So uh, that's why uh, GANs have achieved uh, remarkable uh, empirical uh, results. So uh, now I have to talk about like uh, now why. So uh, I think now uh, we will have a clear understanding, understanding like uh, now why should study GANs. So uh, uh, move on to uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, so uh, since like uh, the inventions of uh, GANs, like I uh, have been hailed by academics and industry experts um, as uh, one of the most consequential no previous slide please not this one uh, previous slide
Uh, can you able to hear me? Uh, are you able to hear me? Sorry, uh, I cannot yeah, see yeah. previous slide. Yeah, which slide number uh, 20 is it? Yeah. I think it's slide number 20, number. not 21. Yeah. Uh, right now I am seeing slide number 21 actually. No, uh, it's it's on 20, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, so um, since the invention like GANs uh, have been hailed by academics and industry experts as one of the most consequential um, innovations in deep learning. So here, uh, one of the researcher, uh, Ayan uh, Lukin, um, so uh, the director of AI research at uh, Facebook, went uh, so far as to say that uh, guns uh, and their variations are the coolest idea in deep learning like uh, in the last 20 years. So the excitement is uh, well justified. Uh, so unlike um, other uh, advancements uh, in machine learning, uh, that may be household like uh, names uh, among researchers, but uh, could uh, elicit uh, no more than a critical uh, look from uh, anyone else. So GANs have captured the imagination of researchers and the wider public um, the, alike, okay? So uh, a, you will be Rohit. seeing uh, like uh, this uh, photorealistic, uh, but fake human faces, uh, which were synthesized by a progressive uh, gun, uh, which uh, had been trained on high resolution portrait photos of celebrities. Uh, the further thing like uh, you can explore about this thing uh, on the paper like uh, which I had addressed uh, here. I move on to slide number 21, please. So right now we are in 21 slide, right? Yeah. Uh, here, like uh, if you will see uh, uh, here, uh, by using a gun uh, variant, they had used a gun variant, uh, which is uh, known as cycle gun. Uh, so uh, like uh, here, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, we can turn a monet painting into a photograph or turn an um, image of a zebra into a depiction of a ho horse and vice versa, okay? So uh, move on to next slide. Uh, are we on slide number 22? Uh, sorry, my network I think is slow. Yes. So that's why I'm seeing slides very lately. Yes, you're on 22. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So uh, now like uh, if uh, we talk about uh, loss function, so here like again, try to replicate a probability distribution. Uh, so um, this would uh, therefore use loss functions that reflect uh, the distance between the distribution of the data generated by the gun and the distribution of the real data. So now uh, how do we capture the difference uh, between two distributions uh, in a gun uh, loss function. So this question uh, is an area of uh, active research and many approaches uh, have been proposed. So uh, here, like uh, I will try to address uh, two uh, common gun loss functions, uh, both of which are implemented uh, in TF gun. Uh, the first one is uh, minimax loss, uh, where um, like, uh, and the second one is uh, uh, Wasser, uh, Wasser, uh, like a W uh, loss, W gain, uh, which is also known as uh, W gain. So here, uh, the default uh, loss function for a TF gain estimators. So it has been uh, first uh, described in a 2017 paper. So now uh, we can um, have a confusion in our mind, like uh, should we have one loss function or two? So here, like a, a gun uh, can uh, have two loss functions, uh, one for generator training and uh, one for discriminator training. So how can our uh, two loss functions uh, work together uh, to reflect our distance measure between probability distribution? So uh, in the loss, it's, uh, in the loss uh, schemes, uh, like uh, here, we will look at here, um, uh, the generator and discriminator losses are derived uh, from a single measure of distance uh, between probability distributions. In both of these schemes, however, the generator can only affect one term in the distance measure, the term uh, that reflects uh, the distribution of the fake data. So uh, during generator training, uh, we drop the other term, which reflects the distribution of the real data. 
so uh, the generator and discriminator losses uh, look different in the end even though like uh, they drive from a single formula as you can see here uh, i have given a uh, formula uh, for the minimax loss um, so if I talk about the annotation, so here the DX is a distributor's estimate of uh, the probability that uh, real data instance uh, X is real and uh, E bis X uh, is the expected value over all real instances. Okay, and the G of Z uh, is the generator's output when uh, given noise is when given noise Z. Okay, and the D of G of Z uh, is the uh, is like uh, the distributor's estimate uh, of the probability that a fake instance is real wherever uh, e base object um, is uh, the expected value over all random inputs to this generator okay move on to next slide please yeah so uh, in modified uh, minimax laws uh, so here um, the original uh, gan paper notes that the above minimax loss function can cause the GAN uh, to get stuck in the early stages of uh, GAN training uh, when the discriminator's job is very easy. So uh, here the like uh, the paper uh, therefore suggests that uh, modifying the generator loss so that the generator tries to maximize uh, log of D of G of Z. Okay. So in like a uh, uh, in like a T of uh, TF GAN library, uh, you can see uh, the uh, implementation of this uh, modified generator loss functions. Okay, now if I talk about uh, buses in loss, uh, so by default uh, TF uh, TF GAN uh, uses uh, this particular loss. So this loss function uh, depends on a modification of the GAN scheme, GAN scheme uh, called uh, W GAN. Okay, so in which uh, the discriminator uh, does not actually uh, classify instances for each instance, it outputs a number. Uh, this number does not have to be less than one or greater than zero. So uh, we cannot use uh, 0.5 as a threshold to decide whether an instance is real or fake. And uh, distributed training, um, here distributed training uh, just tries uh, to make the output bigger for real instances uh, than uh, for fake instances because uh, it cannot uh, really discriminate, discriminate uh, between real and fake. So here uh, the WCAN uh, discriminator is actually called a critic uh, instead um, of a discriminator. So this distinction uh, has theoretical importance, but for uh, practical purposes, uh, we can treat it um, as an acknowledgement that the inputs uh, to the loss functions uh, do not have uh, to be probabilities. So if I so uh, the WGAN uh, loss functions are themselves are um, deceptively simple. Uh, the first one is critic uh, loss. So he, in critic loss, the discriminator tries to maximize this particular function. Uh, in other words, like uh, we can say, like uh, it tries to maximize the difference uh, between its output on real instances and its output on fake instances. Now, if I talk about the uh, generator loss, so here the generator uh, loss tries uh, to maximize this particular function. In other words, like uh, we can say, like uh, it tries uh, to maximize the discriminator's output for its fake instances. Okay, uh, move on to next slide, please. Yeah, so I have already explained like, uh, so the benefits like uh, of uh, WGAN uh, are uh, less vulnerable uh, to uh, getting uh, stuck than a minimax based uh, GANs and avoid problems uh, with balancing uh, gradients. Uh, so here the earth mover uh, distance uh, also has the advantage of being a true metric, a measure of uh, distance in a space of probability distribution. And here cross entropy is not a matrix is not a metric uh, in this sense. I'll move on to next slide. Yeah, so uh, here uh, now uh, I will talk about uh, the training and uh, the common uh, challenges uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can have here, okay? So, uh, in the training and common challenges, like uh, the first thing is, uh, 
if i talk about uh, no uh, sorry so uh, like uh, uh, there are two key takeaways uh, from this diagram so all of these uh, generative models ultimately drive for maximum likelihood at least uh, implicitly and the second thing second uh, key point is the variational auto encoder introduced uh, i think uh, you guys uh, will be familiar uh, with the variational auto encoder already so in the variational uh, like uh, it sits in the explicit part of the tree so remember that like a uh, 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 B uh, had a clear loss function. Uh, the okay. Um, so uh, like a B know that like a B uh, know uh, like a, we are having two uh, completing loss functions that uh, B will. Uh, sorry. Uh, can we move on to next slide? Hello. yeah so uh, if i talk about uh, evaluation so evaluation um, depends on uh, like uh, on many factors the first factor is evaluation framework and um, the second uh, one is inception score uh, this uh, here as you can see here uh, the ec gain failure mode uh, which uh, like the scores on the right uh, right side indicates uh, the softmax output and uh, the third uh, thing like uh, in like uh, inception score uh, the generated uh, samples looks like some real. So distinct uh, for example, like uh, buckets or cows. So the samples uh, look real and uh, we can generate samples uh, of item in our data set. More, uh, moreover, our classifier is confident that uh, what it sees uh, is an item it recognizes. Luckily, like uh, we already um, have computer vision classifiers that are able to classify an image as longing to a particular class with certain confidence. So indeed, like uh, the score itself like, uh, is named after the inception network, uh, which is one of those classifiers. Uh, can we move on to next slide? Yeah, so uh, now I talk about, um, if I talk about uh, like uh, what like uh, what challenges uh, we can, we may have uh, during the training. So the, so training again, like uh, can be very complicated. So, and I will walk you through the best practices, uh, but here, like I will provide only a high level accessible set of explanation that like uh, do not deep dive into any of the mathematics that powers um, the theorems or shows the evidence. So here, like uh, here is the list of, uh, here is the point of main problems. The first point is uh, mode collapse. So in mode collapse, uh, some of the uh, modes, for example, classes are, um, not well represented uh, in the generated uh, sample. So the mode collapses even like uh, though the real data distribution has support for these samples in this part of the distribution. For example, uh, there will be uh, no number eight in the amnist uh, data set. Note that like a uh, mode collapse can happen even if the network has conversed. Uh, like uh, I had talked about uh, um, in the class mode collapse during on the like a uh, when I was explaining um, the IS and the interclass collapse when uh, discussing the FID. Okay, now if I talk about uh, slow convergence, so, so like uh, this is a big problem uh, with GANs and unsupervised uh, settings. So in which generally the speed of uh, convergence and available uh, compute are the main constraints, unlike with supervised learning. So in which available uh, label, in which available label data is typically the first barrier. Moreover, uh, some people believe that uh, compute uh, is uh, going to be determining factor in the AI race in the future. Plus everyone like uh, wants uh, fast models that do not take uh, days to train. The third thing is uh, over generalization. So here like uh, I uh, I will talk especially like uh, about cases in which uh, mods um, that should not uh, have support. Uh, like for example, like uh, you might see a cow with multiple bodies but only one head or vice versa. So this happens uh, when the GAN overgeneralizes and learns things uh, that should not exist based on the real data. So now if I talk about um, how we can uh, resolve uh, this. So um, we can um, add a network depth and we can change the game setup in like change the game setup means um, minmax, uh, design and stopping criteria that was proposed by the original paper. And the second is, is a non substituting design and stopping criteria that were proposed uh, by the um, 
original paper of uh, GANs. And the third point uh, for in the changing uh, in changing the game setup is WGAN as a recent uh, improvement. And the uh, third point uh, to uh, resolve this particular problem uh, is a uh, number of training hacks uh, with uh, commentary, uh, which means like uh, we can normalize the inputs, we can penalize the gradients, and uh, we can train the discriminator more. And also we can avoid sparse gradients and um, then in the end, uh, we can change like a changing to soft and noisy labels. Uh, move on to next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so here, uh, 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 like um, the researcher uh, had um, generated the full image uh, uh, by adding uh, more network depth. So, okay, so here, like, uh, we may consider, like, um, so uh, this thing I have already covered about the min max uh, again. I want to next slide, please. Yeah, so in non saturating again, like, uh, in practice, like, uh, it frequently turns out uh, that uh, the min max approach creates more problems, such as slow convergence for the discriminator. While the original uh, GAN paper proposes as alternative formulation, uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, non-saturating GANs, also known as NS GAN. So in this version of the problem, rather than trying to put the two loss functions as direct competitors of each other, here we make the two loss functions are independent. Okay. So um, this is like uh, the sketch. Uh, yeah, we can now move on to our next slide. So now. Uh, we can say like uh, uh, like um, so whatever like a dreadful sacrifice uh, led to significant improvement in performance. So the new thing like um, is not um, about the new thing about the NS approach is not only that the initial training is faster, but also because the generator learns faster. So the generator so the discriminator uh, learns faster too. So this is uh, desirable because all of us are on a tight computational and time budget, and the faster we can learn, the better. So some argue that uh, the NSGAN has not uh, yet been surpassed on a fixed computational budget and even uh, WGAN is not conclusively a better architecture. So that's why we can say RIP mathematical guarantees. So move on to next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, now I... Do you have uh, time? Sorry, are you okay. over this? No, no, uh, do we have time or how is it? Uh, uh, I think already we have surpassed the time <laughs> because so, uh, my internet is so between the talk. Uh, so Mia San, so what do we do? Do we continue or? Yes, I think you can continue. So yeah, go ahead, uh, Rohit. Uh, you can Please go ahead. It. Thank you. Okay. I, I will. I have not written down the question. We will respond to these answers over email or uh, maybe put it in the the neural network. Uh, Um, Thomas, do you have a suggestion? Yes, please. Let's finish the hands-on session. Yeah, uh, go ahead, yeah. Go ahead and share your screen and uh, run those. Okay. So are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, so um, here um, I have uh, taken all an already available example, um, like uh, which is, uh, which had been published um, by uh, Fabiana Clemente, okay? So uh, here, um, like uh, she had talked about um, synthetic time series uh, data, like, uh, uh, like which is known as uh, GAN approach. So here, like uh, we know that like a time series or sequential data can be defined as any data um, that um, has time dependency. Okay, uh, so well, uh, like uh, cool. Uh, so like uh, now uh, we may have a question uh, in our mind, like uh, where can we find uh, this particular sequential data? So uh, I can say like uh, we uh, can find a bit everywhere like uh, from credit card transactions uh, and uh, everyday routine and uh, like uh, whereabouts to medical rec uh, records such as uh, ECG and EEGs. Although like sequential data is pretty common um, to be found and highly useful. So there are many reasons uh, that uh, lead to not leverage is uh, not leverage it from privacy uh, regulations to the uh, scarcity of its existence. So. 
uh, here uh, in this uh, particular example uh, so the time the time series again uh, uh, which had been proposed in 2019 so uh, as a uh, as again as, as again uh, best framework uh, that is able to that was able to generate realistic time series data in a variety of uh, different domains meaning sequential data with different observed behaviors and are uh, different from other GAN architectures, uh, for example, WGAN. Okay, uh, so uh, here, uh, like, a, uh, uh, like a B implemented an um, unsupervised adversarial loss on both real and synthetic data. So uh, here time uh, GAN architecture introduces the concept of supervised loss. So the model is encouraged to capture time conditional distribution within the data by using the original data as a supervision. Also, uh, we can uh, observe uh, the introduction of an embedding network like uh, that is responsible to reduce the adversarial learning space uh, dimensionality. Okay, uh, so uh, the all implementation uh, has been done um, with TensorFlow 2. Okay, so uh, here uh, first like a uh, so uh, here um, the data set, uh, like whatever data set I am using, uh, which is um, about uh, Google stocks, okay, the, so um, which is consisting consisting of six variables, uh, open, high, low, close, and um, adjoint close and volume. And uh, it is uh, having around uh, uh, 1022 events uh, registered between the period of uh, 1st January to 24th uh, January uh, 2021. Okay, and the data uh, had been uh, processed uh, using uh, Minimax scalar, um, where uh, all the variables uh, were uh, numeric. Okay, so here uh, I just uh, imp imported um, all the required uh, libraries uh, which were required for this particular exercise. Uh, then, um, uh, like defined uh, model hyperparameters. So in model hyperparameters, like uh, in our networks, uh, we, uh, like uh, it, is, uh, it is having generator and discriminator and embedder and then a recovery network. Okay, so uh, here, uh, if you can see here, so uh, the next thing is, uh, first let me talk about, Yeah, so um, in this particular um, architecture, like whatever architecture uh, here, um, like uh, is uh, we are using right now. So uh, what concerns the, like if I talk about the losses, so uh, uh, the time gain is composed by three. So uh, the, the first loss uh, was the reconstruction loss, which refers uh, to the auto encoder, and, uh, uh, which we can uh, say like embedder and recovery, uh, that in a nutshell compares uh, how well was the reconstruction of the encoded data when compared to the original one. And the supervised loss that uh, is responsible uh, to capture how well the generator approximates uh, the next time step in the latent space. And the unsupervised loss, so this one like a, um, uh, already familiar uh, to us. So because uh, it, uh, here uh, it reflects uh, the relation between the generator and the discriminator networks, uh, which um, we had uh, discussed like uh, as a minimax uh, game. If I talk about the architecture, so given the, uh, in this particular example, given uh, the architecture choice and the defined losses. Um, so here uh, we uh, had uh, three training uh, phases. Uh, in the first phase, uh, I, like I'm trying to uh, train uh, the auto encoder on the provided sequential data for optimal reconstru reconstruction. And the, in the second phase, um, it, it is the training uh, the supervisor using the real sequence data to capture the temporal behavior of the historical information. And finally, the combined training of four components while uh, minimizing all the three loss functions, uh, which uh, had been mentioned uh, previously. Okay, and um, so if I talk about uh, the particular uh, data set, so here uh, the data used uh, to evaluate the synthetic uh, data generated by the time gain frameworks, uh, which, been, uh, which has been referred to Google stocks data. 
so i already talked about like uh, we were having uh, six uh, time dependence variable so uh, uh, now if i uh, try to synthesize uh, the data we must like first uh, ensure some pre processing uh, things so in the pre processing um, here uh, so uh, like first uh, we need to scale uh, the series to a range uh, between uh, 0 to 1 okay uh, for convenience like uh, here uh, decided uh, to leverage uh, scikit learns uh, minimax scaler um, which is uh, I, I already imported uh, here okay so uh, then uh, creating a uh, rolling windows uh, like uh, following the original paper recommendations so here created a uh, rolling windows uh, with overlapping sequences of 24 data points and then uh, if I talk about measuring uh, the synthetic data fidelity and utility. So uh, here uh, we were able to synthesize our data. It's time to check like uh, whether the new data uh, is able to reproduce properly the behavior observed uh, in the original stock uh, data or not. So if I talk about the visual uh, comparison, okay. Uh, so, um, now that uh, like uh, here uh, after like training all all these things so we were uh, able to synthesize our data so now it's time to check whether the new data is able to reproduce properly the behavior observed in the original stock data or not okay so uh, so uh, the way to compare uh, like uh, uh, real uh, bit synthetic data is uh, through visualization of course like uh, this in terms of automation is not the ideal to validate the quality of the new synthetic data like a uh, but it gives us already a pretty good idea like to ensure a 2d um, visualization uh, of the results um, it was applied both uh, time series uh, tsna and, and uh, P pca uh, with two uh, components so uh, here as you can see uh, the results are very pretty uh, promising as uh, we see an almost uh, perfect overload overlap uh, between the synthetic and uh, the real uh, data points. So I will uh, now, if I talk about the accuracy, so I think I will provide uh, the code and all. Uh, so we can uh, go through this particular thing. And also I will add the resource like uh, from where I, I have taken this particular example. So uh, would you like to add anything after this? Okay. So, uh, Rohit, uh, I think, yeah, so there are some questions uh, considering the time. I think uh, we will answer it over the neural network, I think. Is that okay? okay? Is that okay, Thomas? Yes, yes, that's fine. Okay, so sorry, sorry for this yeah. uh, interruption. Uh, I will be happy. Yeah. And also, uh, sorry from my side uh, to have the internet connectivity issues in the starting. I do not know like why I was facing uh, during the session. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for attending uh, this particular session. Thank you very much. Um, well, thank you very much for sparing your valuable time today to join today's session. And thank you very much, Rohit and Trudar, for coming today and giving a talk. Um, to all participants, please note that the challenge is open for registration and participation. The link for registration is posted in the chat currently, so you can start working on your solutions and submit the results in the portal. Uh, we do have more uh, webinar sessions planned for the near future, so please check the Air for Good program page for more details. You can also interact with us and other participants on the Challenge Slack channel. We are looking forward to your 2022 edition of the ITU AIML in 5G Challenge. Thank you for joining and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for participating in today's AI for Good session. We hope you've learned something new, innovative, and engaging in today's event. We now encourage you to continue the conversation on the live video wall in the neural network. Here you can ask questions, like and comment, share links, complete the poll, connect with interesting profiles, or speak one-on-one -on -one using the chat and video function. We invite you to explore the lobby, try the smart matching quiz, visit the virtual exhibits, 
poster boards, the eShop, and build your personalized AI for good program. Let's shape the future of AI for good.